quite the battle so far in this matchup here. Here in the early goings even of this tournament, the opening matchup. Oh man, Athena's neck just collided with that middle rope. Naya Barella using the leverage to her advantage and showing the fact that she's not afraid to stretch the rules. That's what brought her her first championship, stretching the rules. Yeah, she's stretching rules about just about everything in her career here. Huge spine buster immediately going for the cover too. That could be it, but once again, Athena showing the heart and determination to be a spirit champion. And give Barella all the credit in the world. She's the one going for the constant cover. She's the one trying to put away Athena. She knows what's at stake. Athena's got her mind scattered all over the place between this tournament and Hanaya. Barella now placing Athena up to the top, looking to put her away with something devastating. And now just raining out with those strikes to the face. Burrell's staying a little too long setting up on this. Oh, Athena just shoves her off. And oh, could it be? On. Could this be here? This could spell the end for Barella in the title tournament. Oh, face! Oh, here with your face! That is definitely it. One, two, and three. Athena moving on to the semifinals. Barella is still out of it after that gigantic O-face by Athena. When Nia comes to, she is not going to be happy to find out she lost in the first round of the Spirit Championship Tournament. In her mind, she should have just been re-awarded the championship after Nevaeh was taken out by her. Oh, that would have been it. And Jesse Brooks knew it. Brooks interrupts. And now Bonesaw slugging away on Nevaeh. This matchup has long since broken down. Look at the impact of these strikes. But Von Erie's on top. Wait, Bonesaw reverses. Von Erie doesn't lose her balance though. Got the cross body. Von Erie didn't hang on to the cover though because she knew Veda Scott was there to interrupt. Von Erie face wash, boot scrape, whatever you call it. Veda Scott in trouble now. Back to the Cobra clutch. Oh, down into a backcracker. Von Erie so innovative and it gets her the win. Yeah, but look at this. Dan Yost laid his hands on one of, one of the participants. Well, I don't know if you've been following the, uh, us on social media at Instagram. Oh, like, look at this. Oh, wait a second. We got a roll up here. Two and three. What? She did it. Blake did it. This is. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout advancing to the semifinals. Spirit Cattle Tournament for Brittany Blake. The most unlikely person to make it into the semifinals. The most Just unlikable it. person to make it into the semifinals. Why is everyone cheering for this? We had a great competitor like Hanaya, a true main event level performer. Well, the problem is Hanaya was viewed actually verbally assaulting Dan Yost in the locker room. I'm not quite surprised that they got the little spat here in the ring. It's Hanaya's own fault. She could have put her away about five minutes ago and didn't allow it to happen. Seth Kamigatame hooked, reaching around almost like a bow and arrow stretch. Referee administering the count there. Should probably get this ready here. Sassy Stephanie really bending the rules to her advantage. And not, not too keen on the uh, on the turnout here. Sassy Stephanie has never needed the support of the fans though in order to be successful. She can get it done on her own. Although some. Yeah, sometimes, you know, later in the match, it helps to have the energy, being able to feed off the energy of the fans if they are in your corner. Right now, we get that drop kick to the base of the spine. And Sassy Stephanie kicking on it, too. 
but perhaps without those skates on her feet. Not so quick to move around the ring as she would be a roller rink. Sassy Stephanie looking to send Cherry Lane into the corner. Cherry Lane cannot get out of the way. I would say so far the majority of this match has been Sassy Stephanie in the driver's seat. Now a kick to the thigh. That's the largest muscle in the body. And that might be the largest bone kicking right in the back of the head. Looking for that knockout, trying to end things early. Hopefully the referee not being too gracious with his count there. Seems like he's got a little uh, little room, giving him a little more room to work than Chris Levin was back in the, uh, in, the, in the opener that we saw here. Ooh, Cherry Lane just standing up, taking that punishment here. Now a series of boosts to the side of the head from Sassy Stephanie using the rope for leverage. Now putting the arms of her opponents behind the ropes so that she's got a clear target for that chest chop. And again! A double chop, she calls for. Oh, she took too much time. And now we see Cherry Lane trying to fire back. She got those bigger targets right there. I see what you did there. But unfortunately, giving up that size advantage. She's taller, yeah. Yeah, not as much impact behind those strikes. She's gonna need to hit her, hit her harder if she wants to win this match. A reversal of the Irish whip. Able to get that sunset flip. Had the legs behind the arms there, hooked. Missed the double leg Nelson. Yeah, and Sassy Stephanie uh, bring both of her knees together on, on her opponent's temple. <laughs> Cherry Lane popping back up. Just get kicked in the midsection. And then take it down with a backdrop suplex. One, two, and ooh. Near fall. <laughs> Able to duck out of the way of the clothesline. <laughs> Cherry Lane just able to muster some offense of some kind here. Going for that bulldog again. Again driving her down on the mat, causing her to lose her balance and eat the canvas. Uh-oh, could it be? Going up top. Instead finding the second rope. Referee administering the count. What's she coming off with? Diving seated clothesline, could that be enough? She gets the cover, hooks it deep, two, and oh, almost. Matt, sitting out with that jawbreaker, making herself in the perfect position to roll on top of Shauna to go for the cover, but it still wasn't enough to get the job done just yet. Von Dutch now, she was looking for this earlier with that fireman's carry. She's got Shauna up on her shoulders, I don't know what she's waiting for. She's looking for the perfect positioning to drop Shauna down. Referee Miley Cyrus. Lenny Dickinson now. Uh oh. Almost perfection. Uh oh. Chris Dickinson. Well, Dickinson now. needs to get out of the ring. Regardless oh. of everything that's going on, Dickinson needs to get oh, out no. of the ring. Oh no. Squarely. Hitting Dickinson in the first quarter of his last name. Oh! oh. Reverse X Factor. And she dropped her right in the back of her head, and now I think Von Dutch. Von Dutch ascending to the top now. Perhaps gonna be looking for that moonsault. And Dickinson pulling the leg out from underneath her. Dickinson, though, he's still feeling it as he tries to set her up in a tree of woe. Von Dutch has nowhere to go. Ascent, uh, ascending up now is Shauna with a double stomp. You're going to think that's going to be enough to do the trick. Just dragging the limp on Dutch away from the ropes, making sure of this. Two, three. She's going to be. A super solid effort by Leia Von Dutch, but the interjections of Chris Dickinson is what led Portugal's perfect athlete, Shana, to victory tonight. My journey is long, and it only has just begun. I don't know which way to go. I'm being pulled.
goes in two directions. I don't know which way to turn. You gotta get back up and start fighting. Jenny Rose now coming to the aid of her protege. Impromptu action here. Joke! You guys are a joke! Jenny's not a joke. We're American. Well, the fans may be a joke, but Jenny Rose is no joke. She ain't no joke, brother. And she's no stranger to international competitors either. We saw her knock off Nikki Storm at Blood and Thunder. Plus, spending all that time that she does in, uh, in Japan. And you gotta think that she's gonna stand a better chance against the alpha female than her protege, Barracuda Brittany. The question is, how much of a chance? Show me what you got, bitch. I wanna sample that and put it into a rap song. <laughs> Jenny Rose, just not. Just not tall enough to instead outsmart an alpha female by going behind. But maybe that wasn't the smartest decision. Caught in that full Nelson. An alpha female instead decided to target the wrist. What a treat for the fans here. Alpha female wanted some competition heading into her match with Havoc tomorrow. She's got two matches here. Jenny Rose trying to take alpha female off her feet to no avail. Able to find her balance, still staggering to the corner. Jenny Rose trying to climb up on the ropes. Takes female down. Nice arm drag. That's what Jenny Rose is gonna need to do. Rely on leverage. Because she's not gonna be able to overpower alpha female. It's just not happening. Look at the power of alpha female just dumping her with that body slam. Of course, both of these competitors competing regularly in Japan. Alpha female coming off a short tour of TNA. You better watch the hair. I did watch the hair. Now I'm excited for that one too. Absolutely. What alpha female wants, alpha female gets. A late addition to the mutiny card, but a welcomed one nevertheless. Just choking with it. Three, four, Referee's gonna get some control. Of course, on that same card, Blood and Thunder, we saw Kimberly and Allison K one on one. A match voted by the fans. It was the 2013 match of the year. Kimberly making great strides. One of the most improved wrestlers on the roster, but she just has not been able to get out of the blocks with Mickey Knuckle. Oh, just putting her hand in her mouth. What is wrong with her? Really? She's comfortable. No, just using her like a, like a pedestal. What's wrong, Rev? You can't win. Oh, and just kicking her in the head. This is like snuff. No, get her away from me. Yo, Rev, Rev, hey, hey. Don't oh, fuck you. <laughs> Well, she threatened you with skull fucking. I'm always down. Oh! I'm always down for some skull fucking. Mickey Knuckles down with the senton. So you're gonna keep talking. You're gonna risk it. I hey, if there's a risk of skull fucking, I'm down. Oh! Another senton. How about a risk of Kimberly having her chest caved in? <laughs> Only a two count, but just barely. Kimberly one second away from having her shoulders pinned to the mat. And she's gonna be careful too. She wants to be 100% or at least as close to 100% as you can be going into one of the biggest matches of her entire career tomorrow. 
That signature jawbreaker only enough to put Knuckles down for two. Mm. Man, Mickey's been deadly with these kicks. Right to the side of the head. It's more of those head games. What the hell is this? Just standing on her chest. driving all of her weight down into the solar plexus. What a bully Mickey Knuckles is being right now. <laughs> Knuckles needs to be more concerned with Kimberly than the official. Look at the force she exerted on that Irish whip into the corner I'm there. I'm surprised she didn't put her through the post. Oh, and again. It's a miracle that Kimberly's even able to stand, and as soon as I say that, crumpling down in a heap of herself in the corner. Knuckles with an insane look on her face. Kimberly is a mess right now. Oh, just kicked her right in the face. You gotta think perhaps Kimberly was trying to cover up that chest. That's what Knuckles has been targeting this entire match in a bit of misdirection. Bit of a cocky cover. I would say so. But again, Mickey Knuckles, she really wants to send a statement to all the other wrestlers on the roster. You're telling me that you don't think that she wants to be in contention to challenge Jessica Havoc? Should Jessica Havoc defeat Shauna later on tonight? Man, what a match that would be. Either one, Mickey Knuckles versus Shauna, Mickey Knuckles versus Havoc. With a win over Kimberly, perhaps that's something we could see at a future event. But that's the big perhaps. She's gonna get through Kimberly first. Oh, but look, look at this! Man. Oh, just better her neck over the rope! I've never seen anything like this. Ever! And hip on her, too! Mickey Knuckles is a monster! Showing how tough she is right now. Taking it to Nevaeh, but once again, Nevaeh catches oh. her and dropping her down <laughs> that huge tombstone. And, and that tombstone might be the death of her career already. Nevea has her goal set. Obviously, Naya in that spirit title. Brittany Blake is the one that just felt. Oh no! Speaking of oh, Naya and that spirit title, not as even not, not only is it on her mind, it just got rammed into her back. Uh, Naya obviously not pleased with the way Nevea led the charge a few months ago here at WSU to kick her out of the Oh building. no! Brittany Blake. A bit off more than she could chew once again. Oh God! Taking the championship to the face, leveled. Kick to the midsection. And Naya, the most hated woman, dropping down Nevaeh with a double arm DDT. Spirit champion standing tall here at the end. She's taking out all of her competition. Leaving two members of the WSU roster laid out. I like her new attitude. She's never really fully been welcome here in the locker room. And she was fighting for her career, lost multiple matches, and they had a Donna Mann and cheat her way in. Well, the WSU contract. Well, let's befriend her then. It's nice to be, have a champion as a buddy. Another shot to the back of the neck. You gotta think at some point, Stephanie's gonna be trying to get Angie Scott in position to connect with that kiss my sass. That variation of a neck breaker that she likes to drive her knee into her opponent's neck. Angie Sky trying to get that crucifix pin. Oh, and she finally gets it. Has her stacked up. No. She had momentum on her side. And now there we see Sassy Steph going right to the eyes of her opponent. Did Angie Sky butt her over in the match? The jury's out. I definitely saw her gouge her eyes right there. And I'll plan his day right in the official, choking her. Two, three. Trying to prevent the air from entering the lungs. Oh, just caught her with that knee. Another shot to the neck. And she put all her weight into that as well. 
pulls her away from the ropes. And even with the leg hook, Angie Sky kicking out. That time it was only a one count. I think Sassy Stephanie may be doing a disservice to herself by not endearing to the fans here, but uh, that's not really, it's never really been her MO. I think Angie Sky just baited her in with that. Play, yeah, a very play a unique, game of Opossum. A very unique style crusher. Oh, how about a knee of her own? That was super solid. Oh, she caught her with the ass. The hip attack right upside the head. And Steph in the corner, nowhere to go. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look, talk about solid. Good God. I think Angie Sky is starting to win over some fans here at WSU. Question is whether or not she can win the match. Fans getting all over the case of the official. I thought it was a fair count. I'll give Sozio credit. <laughs> Sozio not admonishing the wrestlers, but instead admonishing the fans. That's <laughs> Steffi fighting out of that. She's going for the kiss my sass instead. Take it down with that STO. Not wasting any time getting to the cover. Oh. Only a two count. Man, that was close. That was so close, I think his hand hit the mat, but he was able to tell. Sozio calling it off. Yep. That's how close it was. <laughs> Angie Sky having to dig deep here. Trying to get the support of the fans on her side to feed off their energy. Not having too much luck. Instead, caught with that inverted atomic drop. And Sassy Stephanie hooking her up. Oh! There's your neck breaker, Bridget right in the pin. Even still, Angie Sky able to kick out. I was getting ready to ring the bell, Denver. Staff bringing her back up to her feet. Again, you got to think she's going to be going for the kiss my sass. Angie Sky stepping away in the hand. She's got Sassy Steph up on her shoulders. Staff, few more elbows to the neck. And finally able to connect with that man. What a shot to the back of the head. That's sassy Stephanie victorious here. The winner of this contest, Sassy Stephanie. And that's what Alice Kay is all about. You saw how she dropped down when she did that Irish whip for extra force and extra momentum. Still not enough to put away the squirrel girl. Darling has not been able to really muster any offense here in this matchup. Allison K returning here to WSU, making a statement against Solo Darling. I thought squirrels could land on their feet from any height. Oh, maybe she did. And Squirrel Girl is back. Slowly trying to get to a vertical base. She's looking to nut up against Allison K. Yeah, Alison K once again showing how not amused she is by all these antics of Solo Darling. No one was. And Alison K looking to put the exclamation point on this match here. Oh, Samoan drops straight out of the corner to the female modern day version of Maniac Mike Davis, who dead center in the ring. Alison K just has to go for a cover and she's got this. And Alison K looking for the applause from the crowd, not really getting it. And that might have cost her, Looking missing with that back elbow, missing with the leg drop now. And Solo Darling coming alive here in the late part of this match. Look at Solo attack though, but not, no effect. Flying squirrel chops. And not working at all. Oh, oh man. Yeah, that's not working at all. Poor Solo Darling, boot it's to the face. That has got to be it. I thought, wow, I thought that was done. Allison K realizing that there's some spunk left in Solo Darling here. Well, Allison K at least acknowledging Solo's been a tougher opponent than she thought. Jawbreaker. Oh, uh, Solo Darling. Solo She's going upstairs here at the skate zone. Solo goes high. Huge cross body block. Oh, nearly getting the pinfall on Allison K. Solo Darling now rolling up Allison K. 
Well, Allison K powering out with that kick out. Solo's bringing together that offense. Now there it is, there's that squirrel hug. Oh, oh. into that face buster. But look at how smart Allison K is rolling close to those ropes. And look at Solo Darling looking for approval. Wasn't able to Two find Alice K right away, who gets her foot under the bottom rope. She didn't have enough energy to kick out or even get her foot on the bottom rope. Allison K showing why she's a former WSU Tag Team Champion here in WSU with great ring awareness here. Squirrel Girl trying to bring up the limp body of K right now, trying to muscle her up. Barely able to get into her vertical base, and Allison K powering out. Oh. And that huge lariat. Into a cover, and that is it. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this bout advancing to the semifinals of the New Spirit title tournament, Allison K. Well, and Allison K is not done yet with Solo Darling Just throwing those nuts. Throwing? I think that's a different hand gesture. I don't think Oral Hershiser used to throw anything like that. Anyway. <laughs> Bell sounding underway with our next matchup. We saw Jenny Rose taking Brittany under her wing. Unfortunately, Brittany fell short to the alpha female secret show number three. When Jenny Rose tried her hand at fighting the alpha female, she certainly had her hands full as well. So perhaps the best lesson that she can teach Brittany tonight is gonna be in the ring, Absolutely. going one-on-one -on -one against her. A Little bit of teacher versus student, perhaps a final lesson, as it were. Sure. But then again, you could never get too much training. Obviously, Jenny Rose has had extensive tours of Japan. Oh, she rolls right out of that hammerlock, goes into almost one of her own, but goes for the front chancery instead. Gonna think that from this position, Jenny Rose is gonna be able to find a somewhat easy counter. And she does. Yeah, she's somewhat unexpectedly leg. going after the leg. And right there, immediately going to half crab. We have a submission predicament. This match could be over before, before it really gets underway. Brittany struggling to get to the ropes. She's crawling her way to that bottom rope right near us. Denver. There, there it is. And Jenny Rose, respect for her opponent, breaking the hold at the one count. So I'm just going to wonder if she had that hold even applied to do maximum damage. Maybe it was just to show her student what can happen if she's not paying attention. Sure. Oh, take a look right at that. There. Yeah, Jenny Rose perhaps not paying attention. You got caught with that flying crossbody off the ropes. And using all of her weight to her advantage, coming down hard on her opponent's chest. Still not enough. She's not the biggest competitor in there, but she uses it all to try to drive the wind out of Jenny Rose, but Jenny Rose is just too strong. She holds her up there in that body slam. And that's where you can see the Japanese influence, that Joshi influence. Yeah. A very unique way of doing those body slams, the way that the head is hooked, just to drive your opponent down. A much, a much more drastic angle. Jenny Rose comes in, head of oh. steam, clothesline right in the corner. Pulling her back out, not wasting any time. Brings her up. Oh! Just to bring her back down. Brittany writhing in pain on the mat. As Jenny Rose connected with a number of strikes. Once again, going after the legs. And this time, stepping over the calves. Oh, that's an interesting way to put this maneuver on. You don't really see a sur the surfboard applied in this way. And this way, the legs are trapped, but all of the pressure being applied on the shoulders. How about the knees, too? The knees are just being driven right into the mat. And now pulling underneath the chin. Putting a lot of torque on that back, too. Brady doing the best she can to fight it off, but she's gonna have to find a counter. She's gonna be giving it up. Oh, just sent face first to Jenny Rose, gives up on the hold. Perhaps something else in mind. It's gonna do a lot of damage to Bates' midsection. And that huge tackle, bringing her down. Grabbing her right by the ponytail right now, not letting Bates get out of it. These women all are vicious, all in the hopes of becoming the next spirit champion. That's what it's all about. A lot of them in this tournament wouldn't have been the next in line for a shot, so you gotta make the most of your opportunity in a tournament like this. You're absolutely right. 
Both women, women feeling the brunt of this contest. Bates though slugging away with those forearms. Sending Scott off, kick to the face, sending Scott down. Leva Bates following up with a second kick. Scott just walking right into all those kicks. You can see Bates has been practicing martial arts to get to this persona, into a suplex. One, two, and Scott getting out before three. Northern Lights suplex, not enough to put away. Veda Scott, who's trapped in the corner right now with, with Bates charging. Oh, man. And bringing both knees across her. Bates isn't done yet as she's scaling the combat zone here. This is the uncensored oh. zone, but she's still able to land on her feet. Going through, because once again, Scott sidestepping. Scott might have lured her in, tricked her that time. Yeah. Crashing into the turnbuckle, stunning her. Bates that time. Lord and Scott got her draped over the middle rope and come with that big kick right to the side of the head. Might have caught her in the ear, knocking off her equilibrium. Scott though cut her off that time, draping her down with a variation of the stunner. Scott smartly pulling her away from the ropes into a cover. Oh, I thought that was going to be a three count. I, yeah, I thought she was done there. So we're going at it for about seven minutes now. Neither with a clear advantage. Look at Bates now, firing back. She wants to get to that semifinal round. Crack in the back, going for the quick cover smartly. One, two, and once again, these ladies will not quit. Leva Bates realizing being defeated at the eighth anniversary, like I said, she knew she was not in line for a title shot anytime soon. That's what this tournament gave her career new hopes. Veda Scott hasn't been in the comp or been in the quite a while either. Last time she was here losing in a tag team effort, knew she wouldn't be in a Spirit Championship anytime soon. That's why they're pulling out all the stops. Exactly right. Is Veda Scott placing Bates on the top rope and joining her up there? And what does Scott have planned? Looking her up, looks like it's be an ace crusher, possibly. Head of talent relations crusher. But Bates firing away, making sure it doesn't happen. Evading that Super Dave crusher. Whoa, this is not good at all. Not good for Scott. A pussy plunge from the top rope into a cover here. One, two, and three. And Storm can sense an opportunity trying to uh, capitalize as quickly as she can, but you don't want to go blow for blow. You don't want to enter a slugfest. Fisticuffs with Jody DeMilo. That's all Storm can do just to, to push her away. And DeMilo's had an answer for everything thus far. And a steam, Nikki Storm out of the way at the last possible second. Storm again unloads, but what kind of effect is she having? You can tell Storm is putting absolutely everything she has into this. This diminutive spitfire is just on all cylinders here. Look at the intensity. Drop kick and the corner may have been the only thing keeping DeMilo on her feet. Second time. The bigger girl's rocking. A third one. Storm trying everything she can here. Going high risk. Second turnbuckle. Will this be the extra boost that she needs? Now way up to the top rope. Nikki Storm flies with that drop kick and finally gets DeMilo down. This place comes alive for Nikki Storm, who gets a count of two. I noticed Storm did everything in her power to trap the body weight of Jody DeMilo under her. Put all of her weight, as much of her weight as possible, she could get on over the top of the shoulders of DeMilo in a short amount of time. 
Now a reverse neck breaker. DeMilo still in trouble. Could this do it? Look at the leg. Nikki Storm's covers are getting better. Her timing is getting better, but uh, still not quite able to put away the Ottawa Canadian standout. Storm uh, went for a bulldog of some sort, but Kamala's power! And they almost to escape the Samoan drop to a no. Another very near fall. Nikki Storm is just a far away look in her eye. Jody's angry and yelling again. That's not a surprise. They're mocking these fans. Milo. Hard slam just dumps her to the canvas. And Milo looking to go high risk. Oh, modified Bader bomb, whatever you want to call it. The body press didn't work. Oklahoma roll. Nikki Storm picks up the victory. Setting up the ladder once again now. Now positioning, positioning it near that. I thought she was going to use the table, but now I'm not sure what she's setting up for. I don't know. She knows what she's setting up for. She's taking a lot of punishment in this one. Her mind can't fully be in control of her body right now. Getting another ladder. This aluminum painter's ladder. Yeah, notice you said painter's ladder. There's this thing is a wrestler's ladder. These objects are not meant to come across people's bodies. Don't be an occupationist. Ladders are for everyone. I'm just trying to point out the dangers of this match. It's case, a very dangerous case, match. In case you didn't I think, notice. I think we've seen that. I think we've established that. Just look at the way both competitors are moving. This is a very dangerous contest. These two ladies now. Athena might oh, be the, oh, 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 right man. across the throat. But Hanaya is not backing down. One shot to the throat. Unable to stop whatever she's trying to accomplish, and that's put Athena through that ladder. Oh, God! And that ladder, that ladder no has give. no give. Athena was Athena's just, the one who put it there in the first place. Yeah, we say that ladder had no give, but the ladder holding it looks like the leg's about to buckle. That was how much force Hanaya came down, just driving Athena into that ladder. Oh, it looks like Hanaya's not done yet. What she's setting up for. Oh, she, she drove her knee into the stomach, but you gotta remember the ladder was still underneath Athena. So all that metal driven into her back in the process. This match has been a train wreck and a car crash to both women's bodies. The fans are trying to will Athena back into this matchup as Athena has been on the receiving end of quite some devastating maneuvers in the last few moments of this match. Yeah, like I was saying, the first two thirds of this matchup, it was back and forth, but really the last couple of minutes, it's all been Hanaya. With the high impact offense, using the ladder to her advantage. Just pounding away on Athena right now. A huge chop from Hanaya to Athena, has Athena reeling. I, and now battling it out near that, I don't know, what would you say, 22 foot tall ladder? Sure. Sounds about right. I don't want to be anywhere near, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that in a match. Not to imagine the six foot chair structure that these two ladies built. Hanaya's still in control, just battling away. Hanaya's. She sees the ladder, she sees the chair control, oh. she sees the guardrail, which she sends Athena into. Anaya still has a lot that she can do to Athena to try to put her away, but it's that risk and variable of these weapons. With the Samoan drop. Sheets of Tatanka? Fair to say. Every Samoan has ever wrestled yet, never. And not an uncommon maneuver. Look at the sadistic look on her face. No, I don't agree with that either. I think she's got her beat right here, and instead she wants to inflict more punishment. Oh, and that was a mistake. Malone firing it with that forearm. And again. A third one. 
Rose having to use her upper body strength to keep herself propped up in the ropes. Now we see that elbow to the midsection. Got that headlock applied. And taking her down with the Bulldog. Is that gonna be enough? One, two, three. That hard metal finally caught her with a baseball bat. Dang, I, I, uh, oh my wall god. Wall her, wailing across the body. How is this even legal? It's no disqualification. I'm talking about the law law. Oh, okay. Not just the law of the land here in WSU. WSU now laying the law tonight. With their own, with their own version of violence, their own version of hardcore. Ultra violence, let's call it what it is. Yeah. TM. I mean, we're gonna see that. Oh no. We're gonna see that House of Horrors match later on between Joe Gacy and Matt Tremont, but they might have their work cut off from trying to top this. Oh man! Sickening! One of the fans brought a guitar? Yeah, playing the tunes across the brain. Yeah, because you knuckles. Yeah, because you can't take that on a plane. You can't take that on a plane from England. You can't take a guitar on a plane from England? I don't know, I guess you could. I thought that was the number one drug mule technique in the world. Back in the ring, finally. Finally, but for how long? You know, just because there's only one. Oh, oh my man. god! On the side of her face! Swinging for the fence. Mickey doesn't even care! She's standing up, are you kidding me? Oh my god, she's shaking it off. Knuckles doesn't give a damn. Knight doesn't give a damn. Oh my god, and this is where Mickey is at her deadliest. Those elbows are so hard. Gonna think of Mickey's pedigree, where she was trained, who she used to wrestle with. Oh my God. Soraya, just at the nick of time, able to get that shoulder off the mat. So close, yet so far. Well, it's no disqualification. The official can't throw the match out if he's attacked. But who's gonna count the pin if he is? Hopefully he just gets thrown out. X Factor with impact. Yeah, but the snap on her neck. Exactly. Still not enough to put her away. We know what Knuckles can handle. We know what Knight can handle. Oh. And that's why Knight sends her back to the outside. Not a safe haven at all, but a destruction zone. And now you wonder if whether Saray Knight's gonna be looking to follow her to the outside or just try and shake some of the cobwebs. Saraya, though, not afraid to get under this fan's skin. Yeah, I'm Saraya's gonna take after she's done beating up Mickey Knuckles, she's gonna go fight the fans. The and Flaher once again, totally legal in this contest. The meanest bastard in all of women's wrestling. And I feel like I can use the term bastard. And it applies. Oh, what are you going to do? Hey, oh, no. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh! More impact on the neck once again. Uh, and I'll tell you what, Mickey cannot keep absorbing these blows to the head. She's not human. The head and neck area of Mickey Knuckles has just been de destroyed by Soraya Knight. <laughs> what? Who do you think you are, Tommy Young? I wouldn't do that. What? Well, the distraction proven to be beneficial for Mickey Knuckles with that release style German suplex. Of all the times for this kid to grow a pair of balls. Yeah, trying to catch her by surprise. Well, that's by cradle. surprise right there. Once again on the end two count. String together these spinning combinations. She's trying to catch the Joshi legend by surprise. Oh, oh man. That's just an axe kick, axe kick right to the top of the head. Great neck strength by Jenny Rose. And that's definitely something you learn in those Japanese dojos. Absolutely right. And now Mima Shimoto attempting one of those tiger suplexes, but gets cradled for her efforts. Only at a two count. The one thing that Jenny Rose does have over Shimoto is that speed, and you can see that Jenny Rose is keeping that pace up as best she can, despite the beating she's been taking at the hands of Shimoda. Well, take a look at that, German suplex. <laughs> Dumped her on the back of her neck, which is on the back side of your body, so it makes sense. Another axe kick right to the crown of the head, and once again, she bridges out. Despite taking that German suplex, still has enough strength in her neck to get out like that.
Jenny Rose attempting to feed off the energy of these fans. That could be it. Side slam two and oh. Whoa. Looking to finish off the Josie Legend, but she gets caught with a suplex. The lower back taking the brunt of that. Okay. Had to be impressed though by Jenny Rose keeping up with this Josie Legend. Uh, Shimoda's back to her feet though. Oh, just slaps her in the face and body slams her off the top. Yeah, she got flared. Oh, now high atop the... Both feet to send Rose down. Despite that drop kick folding her in half, still not enough to put her down in the biggest match of her career here at WSU. Looks like she was going for Lamahi Straw. Oh, another, another suplex. Another German just shucked her through the air. Oh, now Mima going for that Lamahi Straw. She's got her stacked up. Shoulders weren't down at first, though. Oh, wait a second, Jenny Rose reversed it, two and three! <laughs> Jenny Rose surprising herself, pulling out the victory. Throughout oh. why she's surprised, she kept up with Shimona every pass, taking a beating, and still kept going. Throughout the entire match, we saw Jenny try to catch Shimoda by surprise with fast throw-ups. It was finally that one, reversing the Lamahi straw cradle that gave her the victory against the Joshi legend. Huge win for Jenny Rose here tonight in front of her family and friends. Okay. <laughs> and to see her show number four is going to be Angela Sling. We'll see how she squares up against the veteran in Nevaeh. And certainly has the crown behind her. What? What were you gonna say? She's been making a lot of noise in the Midwest. Definitely, definitely. In fact, honestly, it was uh, you know her her recent appearance for uh, one of our Beyond Wrestling secret, uh, excuse me, sleeper cells in St. Louis that she was able to compete for. I was very impressed. Right now, Nevaeh with the cravat. Yes, right. Angela Slane. Able to break the hold. Now with a standing surfboard of sorts. Never. Never. Not getting very confident in her abilities. She's not gonna give up, but she's gotta find a counter. There we see the reversal of position. Now that side headlock transitioning right to a takeover. Uh, and Angela Slane has to be very uh, careful on the mat here with Nevaeh. Nevaeh, known for her technical on, prowess on the mat. Well, look at the two different Never. wrestlers that Never. debuted tonight. We saw Never. Angie Sky, and she took a much more methodical approach against Sassy Stephanie. She came up short. We saw Paloma Star just moments ago, who took a much more straightforward approach to making knuckles. She came up short. So if you're Angela Slane right now, you're gonna be thinking what kind of a strategy you're gonna have to employ to knock off somebody who's gonna be competing for the NWA women's title tomorrow in the van. Of course, Barbie hating opting not to compete tonight. Perhaps not the fighting champion that uh, she, she thinks that she's cracked up to be. And you know, she uh, opted out of the last secret show as well. Showing a bit of a trend. She opted, she opted out of the last secret show, however, she annihilated Santana Garrett. Just playing. And Amber Playing out two women. Uh -huh. Back to the action at hand. Uh -huh. Nevaeh goes around to the go behind with the waist lock. Angela Lane trying to lower her center of gravity. Sneak out, and she does. She finds the back door. Smart move. Waist lock of her own. Nevaeh trying to break the grip. But Angela Lane, she tightens it right back up. 
Avea not able to loosen the grip, but she's able to take her down, graduates to a front chancery. Sent in. No. Nevea able to get her with a an Alita into a pinning combination. Laying un unable to get out of the way. Call that crucifix into the uh the sunset flip as it were. There's no flip involved though. Here comes Angela Slane, head of steam. Nevea able to get out of the way into a schoolgirl. Lots of pinning combinations being exhibited by each of the two ladies yeah, here. None of the holds applied properly and therefore not resulting in a three count. Part of that time though with the next snap. Oh, kill her with that forearm. All over the face of Angela Lane there. Oh, shut her up. If they didn't egg her on, she wouldn't put out her battle cry. It's gonna be a scary day if she wins championship gold. We'll never, Why? Hear, we'll never hear the end of it. She's the second best looking person in her relationship. Is that your opinion? Oh, that. Well, whatever, right now, right now, it's getting. Oh, God, a test of strength with streaking. We've got these headphones on, and it's like not blocking the shrieks. Yeah, you know what else is not being blocked? The pain in the arm of Lefisto at the moment. Well, right now she just rolled through it. Going for a quick pinning combination, that could be it. Only getting a two count. Look at this, right into it. Well, here's a reason this streak is Lefisto pretty much bending her in hand. Yeah, half crab also wrenching on the neck right now. Cherry Bomb's neck, lower back and leg being worked over by Lefisto. And now Lefisto in control of Cherry Bomb. Oh, maybe not. As Cherry Bomb's fighting back with those fists. Side headlock applied, takedown. All the fans would have to do is cheer Cherry Bomb if she wouldn't let out those streaks. Why would they cheer her when she spent months and months, you know, being, you know, picking apart them? I don't know. Talking about how fat we are and whatever. Well, you know what? You should lose some weight. But back to the neck goes Lefisto once again on Cherry Bomb. The neck, it, you know, if you have a painful neck, every move you go for is going to cause damage to yourself. It's a smart strategy by the champion. Well, there's Cherry Bomb rolling through, getting a side headlock applied, slipping out of it though. Now front face lock. Wrenching on her now. She can wrap her legs around Lefisto. It'd be a guillotine, and that might spell the end of the title reign for Lefisto. A little bit shorter Cherry Bomb, that low center of gravity powering out of this right now. And into a hammer lock. Look at Lufisto nearly bending that arm in half and wrenching on the shoulder, driving her elbow to the lower back and dropping Cherry Bomb down. Yeah, she's grounding Cherry Bomb. And now those knees in the midsection. Look how meticulous Lufisto is, picking apart about four different body parts right now. And she's catching her breath while she works over Cherry Bomb and stretches out the body of the challenger. Although I guess these shrieks might uh, cause Lufisto to go crazy. Well, I think Lufisto likes these shrieks. These shrieks of pain from Cherry Bomb, not these she's temper tantrum shrieks. She's a demented woman, if that's the way she feels. Well, she has competed in Tournament of Death. Right now, Jawbreaker by Cherry Bomb. Able to break the hold and regain the advantage with a nice snapmare takeover, slowing down the pace herself. Trying to strategize as she works over the champion, making the champion carry all her body weight. The crowd firmly behind Lufisto, rallying behind the wounded Al Ronan. I don't know who that means. That's what she called herself. Still, still mourning the loss of Pegaboo as she chases Cherry Bomb to the ropes. The death of Pegaboo caused by the office here. Nick Papa Giorgio trying to stop that violent side of Lufisto for the sake of Cherry Bomb and North America. Oh no, she just kicked the rope. Right into her upper thigh. Oh, God! A vicious shriek where, of her own. Where does she get off? No! 
Oh my lord. Saline's gonna leak out. Doubly. No, they both got a hold. The cherry bombs were gonna be exploding all over the flyer skate zone. Yeah, get him. <laughs> Oh, Nick Papa Giorgio. Oh, but there we go. Let's get in serious again as Lufisto using that thumb to the eye to gain the advantage on both women. Not going down those shoulder blocks. Oh, oh, missing with that super kick. Best super kick ever. Misses. Into a rolling her up. Only getting a two count. Oh, kick to the side. Jeez. Santana. Not a bit of momentum in Shana. Goes right back to that start in that chest cavity, almost beat her. Shauna created that weakness and is exploiting it to the max. Santana though pushes her over. Trap the shoulder. Shauna now back the other way. It's a match of leverage at the moment. Look at this now, Dragon Sleeper by Shana. Well, Shana looking for a submission. You can hear the crowd rally behind Santana. Is that enough? Is that what she needs? Elbows to the midsection. Shana, oh, double hand full of hair. Again, just violently hurls Santana to the canvas. Again, it looks like Shauna's looking to humiliate Santana a bit here. Is this your all-American sweetheart? This girl, American sweetheart. So no respect from Shauna to Santana Garrett, obviously. Ryan and Santana! Gonna make Shana pay for it. Check this out. The head scissors stretching the neck across that top rope. 